Hello, my name's Dave and I've got a beard. And I'm Jacob and I cannot grow one. But together with our decades worth of PC prodding know-how, that makes us perfectly placed to talk to you about Intel's 8th gen processors and how they perform. Uh, that's a coffee lake review to you and me. We've already spoken before about the overall platform, but today we're going to be talking about the most important processors. That's the top i7 and the two i5s. Yeah, normally we would have done a super sexy unboxing video for you, um, but unfortunately the chips got sent over from the US in just little CPU trays themselves. Uh, so Intel UK had to go out and get some lovely Tupperware and some foam. But here they are. This is Coffee Lake, right here. Now prepare yourselves because we're going to talk a lot of numbers and we might get ourselves muddled, so pay attention to the little graphics that are going to appear on screen. So Coffee Lake is essentially still using the same architecture that Intel introduced with Skylake and then produced in Coffee Lake as well earlier in the year. That means it's a 14 nanometer process, only with slightly tweaked um, optimizations and design to make it a 14 nanometer plus plus. And what that means is not a lot really, so it's all about the same. Yeah, the Core i7-8700 is Intel's first hexa-core processor, um, and that gives six cores and 12 threads of processing goodness um, just because of the hyper-threading technology in there. Yeah, and this is the first. This is a real big change from the 7700K. That was a straight quad-core, eight-thread CPU. Um, but they've also had to fiddle around with the clock speeds too. Yeah, the base clock is a measly 3.7 gigahertz, um, but it can turbo to 4.7 on a single core, although we found that it tends to go to about 4.3 gigahertz overall. And then there's the Core i5-8600K. As with all the i5 range, it lacks the hyper-threading that the i7s have, meaning it's just a straight six core CPU. Yeah, in terms of um, clock speeds, it's got a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, um, and that sits around 4.1 gigahertz when all cores are stressed. Um, it's got a single core clock speed of about 4.3 gigahertz. Yeah, and the other notable chip in the i5 Coffee Lake lineup is the 8400. So the 8400 is another straight six shooter from Intel. Uh, it's a core i5, but it doesn't have the overclocking chops of the K series processors. It runs a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and all cores at about 3.8 gigahertz. Um, it is, though, one of the finest gaming chips that Intel have produced in this generation. But for Intel, the overclockable K-series chips are really where they want to focus, because that's where they want the overclock power to compete with Ryzen. So all these Coffee Lake processors all drop into the same Z370 motherboards. And that's because there are no budget chipsets getting launched right now, they're coming later in the year, and there's also no backwards compatibility with 100 or 200 series motherboards, for reasons that I'll growl about later. Okay, so these overclocking parts are the most important for Intel because Coffee Lake was designed for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to beat AMD's Ryzen at all costs. Intel didn't want to see out the rest of the year with AMD sitting pretty at the top of the mainstream with their six and eight core processors, so they had to make something better and fast. Yeah, so less than a year after Intel released the KB Lake processors back in January, those have been completely replaced by a new lineup, the first relevant response to AMD's Ryzen. Yeah, us gamers can pretty much ignore the willy-waving antics of the server-side Threadripper and Core X series. So what can us gamers expect from these two extra cores? Not a great deal when it comes to the hyper-threaded i7. Yeah, so the six-core Coffee Lake um, performs almost identically to the quad-core KB Lake i7. And both the Coffee Lake i5s. Yeah, so this is the first generation that I can remember where there's near as damn it no performance difference between the Core i5 and the Core i7 in this range. Yeah, seriously gamers, just get the i5. So Intel's historic gaming performance is very much in evidence again with Coffee Lake, giving it a frame rate lead over all the AMD Ryzen chips. Now that gap is decreasing as more and more DirectX 12 and Vulkan games get released. For more CPU specific stuff like rendering and video editing however, the higher thread count definitely matters. But when you come to overclock Coffee Lake though, even the more thread-happy Ryzen chips are in trouble. Yeah, both our i7 and i5 top 5 gigahertz, and at that speed, the Intel chips definitely had the advantage. So the whole point of Intel's Coffee Lake was to beat Ryzen, and in that they've succeeded. The overclocked Core i7 beats the 1800X, and the Core i5 beats the 1600X. But it has come at a cost. Yeah, so Intel pulled in the release date for this to get them out this year. Unfortunately, that means we've only got the Z370 high-end boards at launch. Yeah, the H370 and the B360 are coming next year, rendering the new Core i3, which is the first quad-core i3 that Intel have produced, is going to be almost irrelevant until they launch. There's no point spending big on a high-end board and pairing it with a budget CPU like an i3. You might as well just wait until the X Core i5 and you have a bit more extra cash. Unfortunately, Intel have also nixed backward chip compatibility too. Yeah, you can't use Coffee Lake in 100 or 200 series motherboards, and Intel claim that's due to a new power delivery system that means they get the extra juice they need to run the extra cores. We do think you could probably use a Z270 with a hexa-core processor at stock speeds and it would run just fine. 
but unfortunately you can't use a Z270. Um, I think the real reason that this is in place is because they need the extra power that only overclocking can deliver to absolutely guarantee they beat Ryzen, and that's something the that Z270 boards couldn't deliver. So it's all AMD's fault then? Yeah. But in the end then, Intel have created some great little processors in the Coffee Lake range. Uh, for us gamers, however, the Core i7 is probably a bit too expensive and doesn't have the extra gaming oomph that would make it a really a worthwhile purchase. The Core i5s though are monsters. Yeah, the straight 8400 delivers better gaming performance than the similarly priced 12-threaded Ryzen 1600X, uh, so if you're just after a straight gaming chip, then that gives you all the speed you need. If you're after some serious CPU performance but at a budget, then when we overclocked our 8600 to a comfortable 5.1 GHz, it matched the speed of an AMD 12-threaded processor um, for general CPU business. Yeah. But we're really early on in the life of the platform, uh, and there are rumours that stock of these Coffee Lake chips might be a little thin on the ground at launch. So we might be waiting until 2018 for full stock to appear, and that's kind of when the Ryzen refresh is expected to happen too. Then we have the Z390 chipset, 8 core processors, and the Canon Lake chips, which all are something to look forward to. Yeah, so it looks like 2018 could be just as tech heavy as this year. So, I've been Dave, you've been you, and if you like what you've seen and heard, give us all the usual YouTube love. Yeah, and join us for more hardware and gaming goodness on the website, PC Games N. Cool, thanks very much for watching. Cheers!